Welcome to Gunship. Where did I start? (laughs) Thank you, everyone. For the benefit of those who are not here, I will start from the beginning again for the video. Um, So Ufront is a web framework for hacks. It was created several years ago by Franco um, and Andreas. And I've been using it for a couple of years. Um, But as I said before, uh, it's had this reputation for not being very well documented. It's this big framework, lots of classes, uh, lots of stuff going on. Obviously very powerful, but nobody really knew how to use it. Um, I managed to get by by reading a whole lot of source code. And that didn't, yeah, it, it was often not very well commented source code either. So you're kind of experimenting and just see what works and what doesn't. Um, but in the end, I looked at it and I was, I was pretty happy with the way it was structured, with the flex, amount of flexibility it gave, and it was using hacks, and it was beginning to take advantage of some of hacks' better qualities, like type safety. Um, some of the other frameworks that you see on Node.js or uh, Rails or Python, um, without the type safety, I, working in those environments, I just got frustrated. Um, yeah, I got frustrated that errors weren't caught when they should have been. So I was happy to find a web framework in Hacks. So what have we done since I last talked to you guys? Um, Basically, uh, there's been a fairly major rewrite that's made everything a lot more uh, Hacks friendly. So instead of using runtime type information and everything, uh, now it's using some macros and it's nice and fast and all that kind of thing. But the biggest thing is we've actually separated it so that Hacks can, uh, so that Ufront can now run on the server, but also on the client, which meant that we had to make everything be able to work asynchronously. Um, So who here uses Node.js in their day-to-day? Yep. Um, So you'd know in Node, the big deal is that everything is asynchronous callbacks, and that is how you operate, and that is kind of, you just get used to it after a while. Um, With Nico or PHP, you don't have to worry about that, but if you want to run something on the client, you do have to worry about that. Client-side JavaScript can't make synchronous HTTP calls to an API, so it can't fetch new data synchronously. Uh, It can't, yeah, there's just limitations. See, one way or another, we have to deal with this. So, what is the solution we've come up with? Basically, um, as you you click around on this site, um, you notice the URLs up the top are updating. Um, Everything's kind of, slow, uh, but that's okay. So in here, disable JavaScript. Um, So imagine we've got someone who's using IE8 or IE6 and they don't have JavaScript working. Um, This website will still work for them. So every controller is able to render the views, run the APIs and do everything on there. If I was to bring up uh, the console, Sorry, just getting used to someone else's computer while I do this. Um, You see that every time I click on one of these links, it's doing a new request, loading the assets, doing all of that. So let's turn the JavaScript back on and see what happens. Uh, Disable... On this TV, you can't, yeah, because of the low resolution, it's kind of taking up the whole screen. So first load, a whole bunch of assets. I haven't optimized my pipeline. I'm very bad like that. Um, Second load, um, you see down here, it's actually calling the API on its own. Uh, It's loading the views from the server, uh, but the page is actually staying in line. So all your event handlers stay there. Uh, it's faster, you can implement caching client-side. Essentially, it's a single-page app. So for those of you who have built single-page web apps, you're kind of used to being able to jump between pages really quickly, uh, and you know you can record the state with push state so the back button doesn't break and all that. Um, but the disadvantage is, 
when you first load the page with a single page app usually, it's quite slow because you have to load all of the assets, all of the stuff for uh, the entire app basically, and then you render the page and then you make the API calls. Whereas with this, what it's doing is the server gets the request, it loads the appropriate controller, loads the appropriate view, and it gives you a ready to go page straight away, which is fast, uh, especially if you're on mobile and you don't have time to get all the assets and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so basically, that's, that's the kind of thing that I was able to do because of hacks. I was able to actually make something which compiles client and server. Um, in terms of the whole documentation thing, um, I'm determined to change that uh, reputation that Ufront has. So if I come down and click into these API docs, um, I haven't done it for all the different libraries yet, but for most of them, and especially for Ufront MVC, which is the main library, uh, every single uh, one of these classes uh, has full documentation now. So you can come in and it explains what it is, explains how the routing works, there's examples. Uh, yeah, it goes into a fair bit of detail. Uh, and then each field, each method, it's got documentation. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm hoping to add uh, tutorials to this. So I haven't got them on the website yet, but on the very long flight from Perth, I wrote five tutorials so far. I've just got to actually go through them and proofread them and make sure that I made sense in the delirious jet lag state I was in. Uh, but they should be going up later this week, and then I'm going to add tutorials as I go. So if anyone's going, I, there's something that I want to do in Newfront, but I don't know how, come let me know what it is, and that'll guide which tutorials I write first. Um, one of the things, how long have I been talking for? I don't know. Oh, well, I'll keep going. Um, one of the things, other than the client-server thing, one of the things about Newfront is uh, I've tried to, and we, including Franco, when he was leading it, uh, it tries to be a fairly batteries included framework. So you've got controllers and models, you've got session management built in, whether you're saving to a file or a database, you've got some caching mechanisms, you've got different templating engines, and it's all kind of there and you don't have to implement it yourself. Some people like to build stuff, you know, just grab the minimal parts, but if you prefer to uh, have something where you've got your options already available and you don't have to build it all, that's there. Uh, so it is batteries included, but more than that, the batteries are replaceable. Um, so I'm sure you're all frustrated when phones have dead batteries and you can't like swap them without buying a new phone. Um, I had a situation recently where I was using uh, flat files for my session management. So it was saving session data from the users to a file on the server. Uh, and that was how we kept track of what the user was doing through, as they progressed through the app. Um, that server, we needed to set up a second web server to handle requests, so we got some redundancy, a little bit of extra speed, and some load balancing. Uh, but when we did that, all of a sudden you can't have your file sessions reading from the local file system anymore because you've got two servers. Um, I was able to swap out to use a database session implementation, and I changed it in one place in the code, and it swapped everywhere. Uh, so that's kind of everything in Newfront is designed to be replaceable. It uses mInject for dependency injection, um, which is kind of cool. So it means there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of ways to, uh, yeah, use different things. So for example, on the server, the views use a view engine which reads it from the file system. On the client, they use a view engine which reads the templates over HTTP. Again, it's like one line of code, you change it and it pulls it down. So, yep. Any questions? Yeah? Okay. What platforms does it support? Um, at the moment, I've got websites on it running Nico and PHP and client JavaScript. Um, I've got a proof of concept for Node.js, uh, but I don't have any, I haven't battle tested it. So either I need a project which has that or someone else needs to brave the yeah, but it does compile uh, on Node.js using Express.js as a framework, and it uses the same request and response model. 
Um, basically, it's been set up that there's only two classes you need to implement for a new platform. So if someone really wants to make this work on Java, they need to create a HTTP request implementation and a HTTP response implementation, and you have platform support. So, yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Ah, uh, Lars? Don't worry. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to Gunship. <laughs>